Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Aching. I am a, I'm the moderator for today. I'm a lawyer by profession. I'm a trainee advocate. I'm also a co-founder of Sharia Clinic. And Sharia Clinic is a virtual Kenyan-based legal aid firm whose primary objectives are two. Number one, we seek to provide legal aid services to Kenyans who cannot pay for it. And number two, we seek to enhance the participation of young lawyers through equipping them with practical skills. And we are one of the pioneers in the digital space who do law content. So uh, I will go ahead and present the, uh, I'll go ahead to introduce the presenter of the day. And uh, I'm sure you will love his brief introduction. I'll just get it from uh, LinkedIn. He is um, Robert Njeru Maina. He's a lawyer by profession. He studied, he studied at uh, JQuad Karen campus. He did his KSL. And right now he's working with Ocheng Ogola and company advocates. And he's a lawyer, he's a trainee advocate, he's a writer. Uh, his interests are cyber law, information, entertainment and media law. He's also an entrepreneur. He has a business called Bespoke Cavalier. He sells suits and uh, amazing, he's doing an amazing job. So you can find him on LinkedIn as r.njerumaina, connect with him there professionally and get, uh, and get your suit and uh, get your legal advice from him as well. So uh, before he presents, I'll give him time to present, I want us to be able to understand the scope of this uh, subject. So I will proceed to share my screen. And I want us to focus and share your screen. Let me share. So I believe everyone can see. Yeah, so we can maybe listen in and see what all this, why is the US in Afghanistan? What is all this hula baloo about Taliban and Afghanistan and, and the US? Yeah, so let us watch. Okay. Afghans are preparing to hold their first Friday prayers under Taliban control, but it's being reported Taliban fighters may be allowed into mosques with them. A confidential report by the UN claims the armed group has priority lists of people it wants to arrest. They include Afghans who've served with the military and the police, as well as intelligence units. The UN says the Taliban have been carrying out targeted door-to-door -door visits. At Kabul International Airport, the evacuation of diplomats and Afghans continues. The U.S. moved 3,000 people on Thursday, including those waiting for visas. NATO says about 18,000 people have been evacuated since the Taliban took over on Sunday. And there have been several demonstrations on Thursday to mark Afghanistan's Independence Day. At least two people were killed in the city of Asadabad, where the Taliban used gunfire to clear crowds. But in a rare move, fighters allowed Shia Muslims to commemorate the holy day of Ashura, as Rob McBride reports from Kabul. At Kabul Airport's main terminal, this is crowd control, Taliban style. Volleys of gunfire scatter people in panic. At another gate, even more desperate scenes as the airport continues to be besieged. And at the side of the airport, where the U.S. military evacuation is taking place, private defence contractors there use tear gas. At the British Embassy compound, long lines gather daily to apply for special visas, with promises from the Taliban of amnesty for those who worked with foreign forces and safe passage to the airport. But many doubt the Taliban's promises fears raised by its treatment of protesters wanting to retain the national flag. Deadly clashes with Taliban fighters have taken place in the city of Jalalabad, with emotions running even higher as Afghanistan celebrates Independence Day. There have been further confrontations in the city of Asadabad. 
The violence of this Independence Day has raised tensions in what is already a very highly charged atmosphere. And by coincidence, it comes on the same day as Ashura, the most important date in the Shia calendar, a ritual observed here by the minority Hazara community. Targeted in the past by ISIL bombers, the commemoration this year is also overshadowed by the current upheaval and concerns the community may face further alienation under a Taliban government. As I see it, if the government is going to be dominated by just one ethnic group, it makes us worried that the country could slip back into civil war and destruction. On the streets of Kabul, there are signs of life returning to something like normal, with more business opening and hopes for a new start. Everyone was tired of the previous government. The Taliban is in control of Afghanistan. The country's president has fled, and Western countries are scrambling to get people out. And this took the U.S. by surprise. I did not, nor did anyone else, see a collapse of an army that size in 11 days. But that's what happened. Across the next few minutes, let's go through how, after 20 years of war, this unfolded so quickly. Afghanistan's a country of 48 million. It shares lengthy borders with Iran and Pakistan. And in 2001, a US-led coalition removed the Taliban from power following the 9-11 attacks. Al-Qaeda had been allowed to use the country as a base. With the Taliban out of power, an elected government followed. But the Taliban didn't go away. Years of fighting followed. Tens of thousands of Afghan troops, militants, and civilians died, as did thousands from the US-led coalition. And in 2020, after direct talks between the Taliban and the Trump administration, a deal was done. The Taliban would not attack U.S. troops. The U.S. committed to leave. And in April, the new president, Joe Biden, recommitted to that withdrawal. I think that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. And while American NATO allies are concerned, they concluded Americans going... They had to, too. And so the withdrawal gathered pace. By July, a symbolic moment was reached. This is archive footage of Bagram Air Base. It was a central facility to the US-led operation in Afghanistan. And on July 5th, in the middle of the night, the Americans left Bagram for good, without telling the base Afghan commander. Several days later, the 8th of July, President Biden was asked to assess the risks he was taking with this withdrawal. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. So I will stop there. The rest is here from our uh, presenter of the day. Let me stop sharing. So at least now you have up the question. Kindly, just mute yourself. Okay. okay, so um, Wakili Robert, you the floor is yours. You can turn on your video. I don't know. We can't, I can't see you. I don't know why I can't see you. Okay, now you can unmute and now you have the next 20 minutes to present and we will be able to, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell you when to stop. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Angela. Um, so um, the topic today, um, statehood, um, the collapse of a state. We are going to, well, I'm going to measure um, on uh, what a state is and what makes um, a state a state. And um, just to give you a brief background of um, today's subject, which um, the, the interest majorly lies on the Afghanistan um, issue. And you have to understand where um, the Afghanistan Taliban and the um, US issues interlink. So a while back in the 1980s, early 1980s, um, Afghanistan was uh, majorly a Soviet state. And um, at that time, there were a couple of guys um, called the Mujahideen. So the Mujahideen felt as if the Soviet um, rule was not, for, was not a thing for them. So what happened is they started guerrilla warfare, uh, and then at some point in um, 19, I think 84, um, the Soviet guys 
um, walked away and the, uh, the Mujahideen, the Taliban at that time, um, took the day. So at that point, um, the, uh, the Taliban now were not the Mujahideen anymore. They were now uh, referred to as the Taliban, um, made uh, Afghanistan, current Afghanistan, into an emirate state. And it was locked out uh, away from um, every other state save for the Emirates and um, Pakistan. So what happened is that um, the international relations uh, between Afghanistan and the, uh, and the rest of the world save for the Emirates and um, Pakistan definitely um, failed. So um, uh, September 11, you know, the 9-11 attack happened. Then US said that um, it's Osama bin Laden. Osama, the Taliban guys said you have to show, uh, ta uh, Taliban and Al Qaeda said you have to prove that indeed it is Osama bin Laden who, uh, you know, who made this thing happen. But th there was no such proof that was presented. And um, at that point, um, you know, at some point uh, in Obama's administration, was, uh, Osama was killed. But before then, um, George W. Bush at 9-11 said that the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda were going to pay. And at this point, Afghanistan being the front of the Mujahideen appeared to be a very fertile ground for terrorism. And it is because of this reason that the US troops um, got into Afghanistan to fight the Taliban. And the Taliban, uh, from the Taliban's perspective, and as we, we um, you know, the old, saying goes, the lion will never have its day until um, we stop listening to the hunter. And the hunter in this case um, would be um, the United States of America, because we know, you know, the Al-Qaeda are, are bad people, Taliban are bad people. But for the Taliban, they say that um, the American, uh, Americans moving into their territory was, that that was it for them. That was the, um, you know, the block that did it for them. And what happened is that um, they decided that they are going to fight, you know, to death to get uh, to make sure that the Americans uh, moved out. But the Americans were relentless. They spent over a trillion uh, dollars in trying to, let's say, sponsor Afghanistan into becoming a state as is today. So what happens um, after that? Uh, some some time in uh, 2018. Uh, Trump uh, gets after Trump gets into um, government, he decides to uh, to have talks between the current um, the Ghani administration, which is um, the current uh, president of, of Afghanistan, and the Taliban for a power sharing agreement. But Ghani is not is, is not down for that deal, so um, he kind of sabotages the thing, and it goes to you know to waste, and. Um, the Taliban, there was a time uh, in 2018 where the Taliban and um, the local forces were seen uh, doing patrols together. They were seeing, uh, seeing uh, Dua, Pamoja, and it was some form of, you know, it's a new week and things uh, were starting to look up. But then um, sometime in 2019, after the whole Ghani thing uh, happened, um everything hit the fan and now fighting was back on track so fast forward to sometime in july 2021 biden is in power and he uh, goes on with the commitment that trump made that he's going to get the forces out of um, afghanistan and he says that by september 11 he wants everyone out of afghanistan um from that point sometime in july i think mid july um certain events led to you know about two uh, a week or two weeks ago when Kabul fell, and the first thing that happened is that the uh, um, I think it's it's the western city I, I forget the name of the city, but the city fell to Taliban rule, and the thing with Taliban is that they give some uh, some form of promise that we're going to protect you, we're going to give you a stable. Um, environment, you're going to protect your children, your, your wives and children are going to be safe and all that stuff. And for, uh, for some reason, um, the locals accept them. And for, for you to understand why uh, the locals accept them, I will take you through that in a bit. But um, 